Temple Mount Violence. And the prepper? This is Throttle Up Prepper. <laughs> Welcome to Throttle Up Prepper. This is your host, Jeff. And what in the world does Temple Mountain Violence have to do with the Prepper? I am glad you asked. <laughs> and even if you didn't, I'm going to give you the answer, or at least one possible answer. Um, and make sure you stick around to the end. we got some information. We kind of shifted things up here a little bit uh, to kind of enable us to get right to the meat of these videos a little quicker uh, per request. So... You know, I, I, I don't know how many miles away. I know it's a seven-hour uh, time difference between the East Coast of the United States and Israel. Uh, it's a lot of ocean, a lot of miles, other side of the world, for Pete's sake. What does anything going on in Israel or the Middle East in general have to do with us here in the United States uh, or the rest of the uh, non-Arab, non-Middle East world? I mean, come on. Why do we have to worry about it? Should we worry about it? What's the impact? Well, after having a few conversations with a few of you um, through comments and previous videos about various topics, I know that some of you are, uh, as you put it, uh, prepping for Armageddon, uh, prepping for uh, life during the seven-year tribulation period, uh, at least a couple of you have said outright, you know you're not going to be taken away. You know you're going to be here. Um, so you're preparing to survive the ultimate apocalypse. Uh, I don't quite get that. Uh, it seems to me there's one major prep you're overlooking, but that's another video for another time. But uh, the reality is, without turning this into a sermon or getting too, uh, too deep into the weeds, uh, uh, you know, eschatologically speaking, uh, end time study, for those of you who don't know that word. Um, there are a couple of big events uh, in the biblical prophecy side of things that are yet to happen. Everyone wants to focus on the Ezekiel 38, 39, War of Gog and Magog, basically a Russian-led Muslim nation invasion or attempted invasion of Israel that ends uh, with supernatural uh, events that basically wipes out uh, Russia uh, and uh, the nations that attempt this invasion at the end of days. Uh, a lot of people think that that's coming up, coming up real soon. You can see why they would think that. Russia now in Syria, the bases and everything, all the conflicts, Syria, Iran, all of the players are in place. So Natural to think that that's the next event on the horizon. However, there's one small problem. Uh, Ezekiel talks about Israel being a land of unwalled cities and dwelling uh, peacefully in, in safety in the land. They're not doing any of that. And as a matter of fact, Israel is one of the most fortified nations on earth. They are surrounded by walls and barbed wire and military um, outposts, uh, and for good reason. Uh, this, is, this isn't a video to, to argue for or against it. It's just, I'm just stating the way it is. Uh, so something's got to happen first. And a lot of people overlook Psalm 83. And again, Jeff, why are we going here? Hang with me. You're going to see something in a second, uh, whether you believe uh, in the Bible, uh, Christianity or Judaism or any of the above or not. Uh, this is valid because I know some of you guys don't believe, but you prep for this stuff anyway, uh, because, you know, the handwriting, so to speak, is on the wall, and, you know, it is a possibility, even for those of you who don't believe, uh, clearly, because you're prepping for this sort of thing. So Psalm 83 is basically a completely different war with completely different nations uh, than the Ezekiel War, and clearly happens first. These are nations that clearly are not coming in for spoils of war like Ezekiel, they're coming simply because they hate Israel and want to wipe them off the map. Uh, Ezekiel is a supernatural uh, winning of the war, whereas um, Israel uh, defense forces and their air force uh, basically win this war and take back much of the land promised to Abraham uh, between the Nile and the Euphrates River. So, I said all that to say this. 
Uh, if you follow the news and you know what's going on, all of this hinges upon, you know, even setting the Bible stuff aside, uh, for those of you who uh, don't get it or not into that or, or whatever, just look at the news. Everything hinges on the Temple Mount. The Temple Mount, uh, you know, it's in Israel. It's Israeli land, but for some odd reason, even though in 1967 they captured, re, uh, recaptured Jerusalem as uh, their eternal capital, and uh, the, the Temple Mount is in is Israel's property, jurisdiction, whatever. You... Time out. Sorry about that. I don't know. I'm having issues with the quick time on my Mac. Uh, I dropped out, and I didn't want to have to redo the whole thing. But getting right back into it, the Temple Mount is in Jordanian control. They provide security <laughs> um which you know sometimes works out sometimes not so good so here's what just happened in case you're not in the know you can always get your uh, information i'm sure uh, if you google it uh, there'll be all kinds of news sources i like the jerusalem post you might not i don't know it's up to you there's all kinds of sources but go and get it but this past week there was uh three uh arabs uh and i believe the term in the uh, Jerusalem Post was Arab Israelis, so they're of Arab descent, but Israeli citizens, if I uh, understood that correctly myself. Uh, maybe, maybe not. But uh, they had opened fire and uh, killed at least two uh, Israeli uh, police uh, and uh, injured at least one other. Uh, I'm not sure what the outcome of that person's uh, safety is, but it was a terrible attack. Israel shut everything down. Uh, I guess superseded Jordanian control. Uh, I don't know if it's permanent. I know they just reopened the Temple Mount. Uh, the King of Jordan, King Abdullah, is uh, urging uh, peace and calm and uh, doing and saying the right things, at least publicly, uh, to try to avoid this being uh, what some are uh, warning, uh, some of the terrorist factions and, and, and not-so-moderate uh, Arab uh, nations are calling for a third intifada. Uh, which basically is another war uh, against Israel. So all of the current news uh, and everything always hinges on the Temple Mount uh, in the Middle East. Everything that's going on is pointing to the fact that the Psalm 83 war, where I believe it's 10 nations, uh, come against Israel. Bad move um, because they lose. Uh, good for Israel. Uh, good for a lot of reasons, but... Um, yeah, not, 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 not going to be pretty. Uh, so what is all this biblical prophecy? What is all this Psalm 83, Ezekiel 38, 39? What, what is, Jeff, Jeff, why are we turning this into uh, the Bible network? Here's why. This is why uh, I believe it's valid whether you're a believer or not, whether you're a Jew or not, whether you're a Christian or not, whether you're anything or not, why you got to pay attention to these things. Because whether you believe it or not, here's the key. They believe it in the Middle East where it is an everyday occurrence. The Israelis surely believe. The Arab nations surely have their beliefs. And they may be completely different from yours and mine, but here's the deal. The people involved believe it. So we have to pay attention, uh, even over here. And here's why. Should a third intifada, a third war be declared between the Arabs and Israelis? Should it turn into, uh, and let's just say, it, it's not time for this big, massive battle in the Middle East where Israel takes over just about everything. Even if that's not right now, even just the mere fact of it turning into a bloodbath and a control issue over the Temple Mount... That could very well have implications here in the United States. Why? I, I don't know the exact population, but it's well over a million Muslims in this nation. Um, and clearly, most of them, at least so far, are peaceful. We don't have riots in the streets uh, on a daily basis. We don't have all kinds of things happening here that are happening over there. Is that just because they're such a outnumbered minority? And I, I, I don't know. But the point is, there's at least a potential of violence breaking out in this country. Uh, 
I, I don't think necessarily on a national level, but certainly in areas where there are heavy, heavy Muslim populations, places like Michigan uh, and, and uh, Minnesota, other places that have heavy Muslim concentrations. What if Israel takes the Temple Mount? And whether you agree with whether they should or not, that's not a discussion for now. The point is, what if it happens? It could spark a lot of violence here. Not fear-mongering, not wishing it to happen, not saying it's going to happen. I'm just saying it, it, there's a reasonable expectation that it could happen. And as a prepper, as a concerned individual for you, your family, your church, your community, your neighborhood, your state, are you prepared? I and never, ever, 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 ever would suggest or um, encourage any kind of violence, ever. I'm prepared to care for my family in whatever way necessary. And I'd say all the time, I pray to God I never have to do anything violent to protect myself. Will I if my life is threatened? I like to believe I, I would. I don't know. I, you know, I've never been in that situation, thank God. I've never been in the military. I, I've, I've never been in law enforcement. I've never, uh, thank God, been attacked in such a way uh, other than a thorough butt whooping from time to time. But that's been a long time since that's happened. So I don't know. I, I don't know what I would do. So I certainly could, could not uh, begin to suggest anything. But the point is, do you have a plan? Uh, you know, there's that natural fight or flight instinct that the good Lord gave each of us. Me personally, if there's a way to get away uh, from a violent situation that may erupt, whether it's caused by Temple Mount issues and what's going on in the Middle East and Psalm 83 and all, all this stuff, whether it has anything to do with that or not, or, or it's just, you know, New World Order, George Soros junk, whether it's, you name it, fill in the blank. Are you ready? Are you prepared? Uh, I know my first choice, if I can get out of Dodge, uh, <laughs> I'm doing it. I'm out of here. I don't, I don't want to hurt anybody. I don't want to have anybody in my family hurt. Uh, I, I'm all for fleeing. But are you prepared? That's what this video is about. I, I'm probably going to disable comments with this video because I don't want to hear all the anti-Semitic stuff. I don't want to hear all the anti-Muslim stuff. I don't want to hear the Jeff, you're a moron stuff. <laughs> I get it. I'm nuts. I have problems. Uh, I don't need you to tell me that. But listen, I, as always, these videos are here just to um, encourage you to think. Think things through. Uh, not to encourage you to any particular action or any particular preparation. Uh, obviously, from time to time, I tell you what I'm doing. Uh, more or less, um, just, uh, you know, not that you should do what I do, but that you have opportunity to think things through and perhaps have a little different, uh, perspective on things. Uh, may there be peace in Jerusalem. May there be peace in the Middle East and may there remain to be peace here. Listen, it is time for all of us to throttle up whatever comes our way until next time. God bless.